There we go. Oh, fish on. <laughs> Yee-hoo! Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Sammy Hitsky Fishing Adventure. You're joining me on a solo jigging mission today, but not just any jigging mission, I'm out here with a purpose. See, a couple of weeks ago, I was having a chat with my mates from Pure Fishing, and they said, Sammy, we'd love you to test out a couple of the new jigs from the Berkeley Range. I said, no worries, guys, no worries. So they sent out a little care package, and here I am. I've got two jigs to put through their paces, and I'm looking forward to it because there's one I haven't used before. There's a style there that is completely new to me, so I'm looking forward to giving that a crack. I'm not going to catch any talking about it, so we're in prime bite time right now. I'm going to get these jigs rigged, send them down, see if we can't get them connected to a few fish. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If anything else, what a beautiful morning to be out here. Let's get into it. Now, guys, I mentioned there was two different kinds. The first one is pretty straightforward. I know exactly what to do with this. It's called a skid jig. Essentially just a slow pitch jig, flutter jig, flutter style. Um, one minor alteration I'm gonna make. I'm a man who loves hook points, hook exposure. So I'm gonna take the assist it comes with, I'm gonna chuck it off the rear. Like so, don't forget to take off the hook protector, that would be bad news. And I'm going to swing a set of double assists off the front, or off the top I should say. Very nice. Now I've gone for the 120 gram to start off with, I've got a bit of current to contend with. I've got a bit of glow, I reckon that will do the job nicely. Now I'm going to incorporate Rodney Rod Holder into this morning. Two lures is better than one lure. And this is the one that has me, not scratching my head, just intrigued. Probably shouldn't have ripped that. It's a catchy, catchy dama. And I know I didn't pronounce that correctly. Someone's gonna have something to say about that, I'm sure. But have a go at this for a cool little contraption. You've got, well, you've got another layer of plastic, that's what you got, but you got this little doobie whacker here with some assists hanging off it. And then your weighted egg, is what I'm going to call it. Now, I'm going to fish this on a spin because it's going to be sitting in the rod holder. To me, this looks like something that would be perfect to sit there, flutter around, do its own thing, and just get munched. So to rig it, you just thread your line through the little egg. I'm sure these all have technical names. We'll worry about them later. And it goes through the water like that. Tasty boys. Now you can get these things as well. Kabura trailer. So we're gonna rig that up for a bit of extra scent, a bit of extra, I might even chuck one on my jig as well. And that just screws onto this little pin here. Hit the center and screw it on. And that will lock it into place. Woo. Looks flash. I'm gonna be greedy. I'm gonna chuck another one on. Tell me that doesn't look tasty. <laughs> cool. Cool. Rightio. Let's line up a drift. Send these things down. Right, I got the jig in hand. Got the catchy catchy in the rod holder. Once that gets to the bottom, I'm just gonna put the bail arm over and let it kind of drift around and do its thing and I'll work work the jig. A few fish showing on the sounder there. Just gotta make sure. There we go. It's on the bottom too. Do your thing. Righto, let's catch something. You know what I haven't caught in a while? Big pearly. Oh, 
Yes. All right. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think it's very big, but our mate, the Kachi Kachi, has struck first. I wasn't actually expecting that. I backed myself in with the jig. Old Rodney. Rodney Rod Holder. Well, whatever it was just woke up and I just dropped it. Beautiful. Exactly how I was planning on starting the morning. Anyway, I'll get back down there. See if we can do that again. getting hit again. It's a good fish too. It's got a bit more weight to it, this one. Two and two drops. This has got a fair bit of toe, nice bit of weight to it. I'm just gonna go nice and light. They've only got little small assists on it, so I don't really want to um, put too much pressure on that. It's clearly a nice fish. Love to get him up to the surface, but might be a nice pearl, you know. He's not doing much. Just goes to show that extra, oh. There's some good head shakes there. He's a nice fish, this thing. We shouldn't be far off color now. What have we got? Oh, well, no one's gonna complain about this. Net not ready, as per tradition. You can sir. In you go. <laughs> yee Well, that is a delicious size snapper. Oh, he was going nowhere. I could have gone harder. All right, out you come there, friend. Well, there you go, guys. How cool is that? <laughs> First drop. Got hit. Dropped it. Felt like a good fish because it took off. Dropped it straight back down. And this guy nailed it. Doing nothing in the rod holder. Just little flopping around. This thing's crunched it. Now, what's got me a little bit... um Got me thinking is I've been jigging the whole time through all that. And haven't had a touch on the jigs yet. Whereas this guy's been hit twice. Ow! Spiky boy. So, interesting. Very, very interesting. I'm going to do some more research. I'm going to dispatch this guy. I'm going to take this guy for a feed. But uh, I'm going to dispatch him, get him in the ice. I'm going to put these back down and um, see what happens next drift. Because, yeah, this is very eye-opening. That's pretty cool fish, though. Two hooks. Pinned nice and snug there. He was going nowhere. I could have gone a bit heavier on him, but... He's in the boat, that's the best part. You ripper. Yeah. Grab the hooks out of this guy. One. Two. Now it goes without saying guys, any fish that you're gonna keep for the table gets the royal treatment. Easy mate, easy, 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 easy. So that's brain spike. That kills the fish instantly. There, we give him a bleed. Should be able to see some blood coming out there. 
you can't, then you may not have uh, got the right spot. Then straight in the ice. Righto, he's all good to go. Yes, he is. Going to introduce a bit of scent to my jig. Why? Because I can. Catches. If it's a defining factor that gets a fish to chew, then worth it. Looks like we've got a bit of a wind against current situation this morning. That's all right. He's meant to get, uh, the weather is meant to pick up. Oh, we're on the bottom here. He's meant to pick up. Just bring that a couple of turns off the bottom. Uh, later in the day, But for now, it's quite lovely. See, the problem with getting hit on that thing, like straight away, is now I'm gonna be like, every time I'll be talking to you, you'll be like, these ones, waiting for it to go off. It's that second rod addiction. You're just looking at it, looking at it. Would like to see it get crunched again. And because I haven't used one of those before, I was obviously reading up on what best practice is they reckon drop to the bottom and just a slow retrieve and that's all you need to do and look I'm tempted to believe them after it just sits in the rod holder and gets nailed interesting to see how the jig goes I usually back myself in on a jig but early days Slow one. Well, you wouldn't believe it. Clearing the line, turned the cameras off, paused it to turn the cameras off because I'd given up. Fish on. And that's on the um on the catchy catchy again. This feels snappery, particularly the way it hit that far off the bottom. And he's doing a bit of running around. Again, just fishing nice and light on him. Now, I'm wondering if these fish aren't switched on a little bit more to a uh, smaller presentation. So obviously, jigs are a very bait fish profile orientated um, presentation you, you're lifting them you're dropping them they're fluttering around essentially like a wounded bait fish whereas this thing's cruising along it could pass as a little octopus little squid a um, little prawn with that wriggling tail so I'm wondering if these these fish are just a bit more excited by the smaller stuff as opposed to the big jigs had one hit on the jig so far. This is number three. He's definitely not going as hard as the uh, last one. I'm guessing smaller fish. And I'm not complaining. Bit of a tougher bite this morning, really. Don't seem to be too fired up. Just a subtle presentation. Doing its thing. There's the culprit there. Little panty snapper. Only a little tacker. I'll net him anyway. There you go. Snapper number two. Not a bad fish at all. He's only a smallie, but he woofed it. That second hook is right down his gob. <laughs> This is good fun. Unexpected good fun. How cool is that? You! Now I'll just check the size on this guy because he has got a bit of bar trauma. You can see his, some of his guts are coming out his bum there. So, yeah, he's 45. So I'm going to take this guy just because he's not in the best shape there. He's got his guts coming out of his bum, which 
I haven't had happen myself, but I can't imagine it's a good time. Um, if he was looking all good, he would go straight back. But look, if a fish is gonna have a low chance of survival on release, I'd rather make the most out of it, keep him for a feed, and then when uh, one that does come up uh, in good nick, I'll release that one. Coming up on a redrift. Deploying the same as before, obviously you wouldn't wouldn't change up, but I reckon that one's got about one or two more fish in it before I change the the, uh, the normal jig straight over. Is it on the bottom? Yeah, it's on the bottom. Now I don't know if you guys can see that on camera or not over there. There's a water spout for forming. Off the bottom of that cloud. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm generally yeah, take a stab and say it's not great. Well, it's not great to be over there. Cool. Oh, fish on. Fish on. Whoo! That's a nice fish. Once again. Oh. This guy in the rod holder. That's a really nice fish. Had this guy sitting down there. And I looked over and it was keeled over. And this guy's still going. So these fish are, I would say, in a pretty shut down mood today. Really having to coax them into eating. And they're just taking the subtle presentation. I've had one hook up on the jig. When they're feeding, you guys would have seen in previous videos that jig just gets absolutely smashed but today it's um well it's it's lucky i got the catchy catchies on board otherwise it'd be very slim pickings this guy's starting to come up now same as before playing him nice and light There's a bit of colour. And I think our culprit is another nice red one. Oh, he's net worthy too. One of these days I'm going to get a new net. It's going to be a great day. That day is not today. Ladies and gentlemen, we have another snapper on board. This guy, he looks like he might go a little release job, I think. And this is why on these small hooks, it pays to take it easy. Have a go at that. One little hook in it, probably can just reverse it out there. Now, that's how easy it is. So nice light drags with these guys, small hooks. And that's three zip to the catchy catchy. This guy's in good condition, so I'm gonna get him back. Well, I'm not going to lie, I'm actually quite surprised. Look, obviously this thing, you know, it's got a bit of flutter. Pretty cool little presentation, but did I think it would outfish a jig today? Absolutely not. In my head, I was like, what I'll do is I'll bang three or four quick ones on the jigs, and then I'll focus on this guy and see if I can't get a fish on this as well. But uh, I definitely didn't expect this guy to be saving my day. Well and truly too. One hit to uh, four hits, and this has had three fish landed. So, something's going on down there. And that's the beauty about fishing. It changes every time you go out. Obviously these fish are in some sort of mood. They're not super predatory. They're not taking big aggressive hits at a jig. So at a bait fish profile, but they're happy to have a little nibble at a little wiggly presentation like that. Looks like a little prawn, worm, squid, something like that. 
happy to have a go at that and currently all the fish I've landed are coming to that so hey can't argue with the results so far it's a it's a clean sweep right guys I want to hear from you if you've had a day out on the water saved by a lure you did not expect you got to tell me about it let me know in the comments below I want to know what lure it was what you caught I am sure there are some cracking stories out there get commenting Look what's happened again. This was well off our drift. Oh, nice fish. I just looked over, no hit or anything. I was winding in the uh, jig rod and this thing just goes Meh. Oh. This one's a, well they all feel good on this lighter tackle. But this guy, really just <laughs> keeled over and away he went. I could hardly get it out of the holder. Really gonna take my time with this guy. Oh, well, I can't work it out. These fish do not want a jig at all. But they will happily pounce on um, old mate Rodney Rodholder goes to show you can have all the theories you want doesn't mean squat if the fish don't agree oh there's a nice big blue bottle on my line those fish aren't in the mood for what you want to give them then they're not gonna eat there's some color There's some colour, and there's snapper number four. It's actually a really nice one. Yew! I think this is the best one of the day. What a ripper! <laughs> oh yes! And there we go. That's definitely the best one of the day. That guy would be getting close to 70 centimetres, if not 71, 72. I'm not going to measure him. He's in good nick. I'm going to try and get him back. There you go. Catchy, catchy. Catchy, catchy. I wonder if that stands for catchy, catchy. Uh, I'm going to claim so, but what a lovely fish. Really nice specimen. Good nick. Let's see if he'll go back. Oh, very keen. Away he went. Well, if you were chasing a feed and a feed only, that would be a snapper bag out. Uh, I've done it the unconventional way. I don't know what to tell you. I used to think I could jig, but uh, I'm getting well and truly outdone today by this of all things. They must just not be in the mood. It is uh, very bizarre, but I'm not going to complain pays to have a bit of a variety down there because if they're not doing what you think they're doing chances are they've got to be doing something else like today anyways let's have another drift kind of half determined to get one on the jig now why won't they eat jigs today is it me is it the way i pitch Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. Jig hook up. Might be a kingy or something. Bit of head shaking going on. Jeez, didn't we work for that? It's got to be a kingfish. Kingfish or a tuna or something like that. Big bonito. Oh, right. Oh. That just got whacked too.
I just saw that get hit. Oh, wow. That just got smoked by a shark just under the boat. Turn the heat up on this guy, see if I can get something back. I want my jig back. Oh, that sucks. Oh, yes. Another lovely encounter with those endangered sharks. I feel so blessed to have encountered that. I dead set reckon that was two meters under the boat. Looked down, saw, saw a bit of color, and then saw this get absolutely smoked. Well, you still gotta chalk that up as a little win for the jig. I did hook one on the jig and almost landed it. <sighs> yep, good. Good, good, good. There we go. Again, watch that one happen. Reversed up on it, it sunk down a little bit. And then bang, white went. Now the trick is gonna be to get this guy up before the sharks find him. While still going relatively light so we don't pull hooks. I think it's pretty safe to say this is a pizzling. Could just be me, maybe the jig's gonna get hit in the hole or soon. Might just be me. I've got colour. I don't want to talk about it though because that's when the shark came last time. Oh, it's a pearl. And it's a nice pearly too. <laughs> well, that's cool. That's really cool. Nice, nice pearly. Have a go at that. Beautiful pearl perch. He's a nice fish. Nice little hook up, corner of the mouth there. Probably wasn't expecting that guy. I thought it might have been another small snapper, but definitely won't say no to a pearly, bit of color. Uh, I do apologize to this guy. If he was red, he could go back, but unfortunately, we all know the deal with pearlies. Tasty, tasty, tasty. But that is, that's a cool fish. He's obviously come up off the bottom, grab that. Just thought I'd check, make sure the jig wasn't on. Believe it or not, surprise, surprise, no dice. Pearly, 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 how cool. So guys, I was pretty keen to get one more fish. And I thought I'll go back into a mark a bit further in. Um, I'm a bit wide at the moment and uh, the weather is getting a bit worse and worse and worse. I just traveled like 5K and it took ages and I got soaked. So I'm at these marks now, I'm gonna give it a quick crack, but uh, I'm probably not gonna hang around out here too long. It's not dangerous conditions, it's just really snotty, hard to travel into, which I have to do to get home. It's gonna be a slow, slow, slow old slog home, but at least we got some cracking fish nice and early. Would have liked to come out for the afternoon session. Uh, you'd be getting an ass kicking, that's for sure. Oh. Wave breaking behind me. Yeah, a few white caps and stuff around. Not real fun. But I'll, um, look, I'll give it a crack. See what we can turn up. Bit nautical out here now. Pretty well constantly in reverse which means I can't get a good reading out of the sounder because it's just putting air through it. This will be the last drift. Oh. oh no. Missed him. Oh, 
Got that one. The jig. Oh, it doesn't feel like a terrible fish either. Another little snap. <laughs> Finally, the last drift of the day, the jig pays off. Woo! I don't know what it is about today, but they were not willing jig eaters. Oh, never thought it'd be so hard to catch fish on a jig. They were just not interested at all today. But nice to finally come away with a, with a win on one, even though the uh, catchy catchy was getting bit as this got eaten as well. So he's a nice fish. Big bump on its head, how cool is that? I'm gonna um, get the hooks out of this guy, release him, and I'm gonna get on my merry way, get out of here. It's getting even snottier than before. So hooks out, fish back, and then I'm out of here. Finally, quick swim, and I'll give him a big spit. Come on, mate. Come on. There we go. Well, guys, that was a pretty interesting session. It's definitely not what I was expecting was going to happen, but hey, you got to roll with the punches out there while you're fishing. Here's a little fun fact, though. It took me almost three hours to get back to the ramp. That was a pretty snotty, wet punch home. Yeah. Ah, well, sometimes you got to do that. Anyways. Here's the fish that I kept for the table. I'm not going to show you any filleting today. We'll do that in another one. But I am going to have a big tackle talk on all this new flash gear. So you guys can have a little squiz at that too. But check out these fish. Good eating size. Happy to let the rest go. Didn't really need them for a feed. Got plenty here. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Going to have some snapper wings. I'm going to deep fry them up. And uh, then might have some fillets a bit later in the week. Very, very nice. Right, guys, tackle talk time. Now, I've part way through editing the video already and I realized I've pretty much showed you guys how to rig both of them up. So we're just gonna have a bit of a general chat. Now, obviously, the two lures I used were the skid jig and the catchy catchy dammer. Um, again, pronunciation on that's probably wrong, but I'm running with it. They come in a heap of different weights, so just pick the size that best suits the depth of water you're gonna be fishing. I was fishing in about 80 to 100 meters of water. I had the current go and get some wind so I had to go a bit heavier than I normally would. I, um, I started on 120 and it ended up on 150 when it got really uh, really gnarly on the skid jigs um, and in the catchy catchy I was using the 140 gram. Now I picked the heavier for the uh, catchy catchy because I was just fishing it out of the rod holder. When you're gonna fish a Rodney rod holder rod, you want it to be heavier than what you're fishing with your other rod because you're not tending to it. You're not free spooling it when it needs to. You're not doing anything apart from just putting it in a rod holder. So if you go nice and heavy, it's gonna stay a lot more vertical and it's not gonna end up drifting around way out the back and it's just gonna be easier to manage. Now, like I mentioned throughout the video, the Catchy Catchy comes with quite small assist hooks straight out of the box. If you're gonna fish somewhere where there's a lot of sharks or you've gotta really stop fish from going back into the reef like out up North Queensland or something like that, I would suggest uh, swapping those out for some heavier gauge and wider gaped assist hooks. Just a bigger size would do you uh, a world of good. Um, but if you've got the luxury of being able to fish light, light like I did for most of my day, um, those guys there are fine. Same with the skid jig. I like to run a second set of assists, so I ran that assist that it comes with off the bottom. It's a nice, sharp, wide gape hook, so it's a good hook. Chuck that on the bottom, and then I um, I put a double assist off the top. Personal preference, you can just run the one. Uh, that's just what I do and what I'm used to. Now, the final bit of sweetener we'll talk about is these guys here. These are the Kabura trailers that I used. Um, these are pretty well purpose-built, I'm assuming, to screw onto the, the catchy catchies. Uh, I run them ran one off the assist hook of my jig as well. Uh, obviously they're centered, so that's a pretty cool nifty little thing to have attached there. It's just that extra bit of movement, extra bit of scent down there. Uh, would recommend chucking them on. You got nothing else to lose, a bit of scent goes a long way, so that's a good idea as well. Setup wise, we're gonna talk about the spin rod first. It caught the most fish, so it's only fair. Now, 
I actually put a fair bit of thought into what rod I pick if I'm gonna, if I know I'm gonna fish it out of the rod holder. Uh, you'll see this has got a full length uh, butt grip. Now, you want that on any rod you're gonna fish out of the rod holder because if you've got a skeleton butt, say you had just this section here, and then you had that, so that's a skeleton butt. You have that leaning up against your rod holder. You hook a big fish and it tears off under a bit of drag pressure. The corner of your rod holder will create a pressure point on the actual blank of your rod and it will go snap. You lose everything above it. So gotta be careful. This one here is a 15 to 40 pound Venom. Now, obviously the Venoms are renowned for being very sturdy, very strong rods, and that's exactly what you want. You saw some gnarly angles that got put in just from getting eaten in the rod holder when the line's straight up and down. So just make sure you put a bit of thought into that rod because you don't want something light, too light that's gonna snap, or that skeleton butt that's gonna snap either. Now, I fished that on a uh, 5,000 size reel that had 30 pound braid and I fished it on 40 pound leader. So that was pretty well perfect for the job. And then the jigging outfit, it's one of my standard ones. It's a Power 2 Bone Ocean Thug rod. Um, got a 2,000 size jigging reel there, 35 pound braid, 40 pound leader. And I'll tie that directly to the uh, solid ring on the double assist. Now, one other thing I wanted to touch on quickly. I've had a lot of questions recently about uh, what I do safety wise fishing solo a lot of times I do fish a fair way offshore for the last probably year or so I've been wearing this this is a PFD one so this is an inflatable life jacket you wear it around your waist like a bum bag just flip it to the back and I'll wear that at all times I'm fishing solo particularly offshore now in addition to that I run one of these as well this is a personal locator beacon or PLB uh, it's essentially a small EPIRB and I wear that on my person the whole day while I'm fishing solo. That means if I go into the water, if I go into the drink, I've got something to keep me afloat and I've got this guy here which will alert the emergency services and they'll know exactly where I am. I strongly recommend sorting something like this out for yourself if you do fish solo often. Um, look, you can't put a price on safety. This kit all together is about 500 bucks. I'll tell you what, it is worth every dollar. Make sure you sort it out. Guys, if you'd like any further details on the Berkeley jigs or anything from the Berkeley range, head over to the Berkeley Australia website. There's plenty of information there. If you'd like to support me and my channel, I've got heaps of merch available on my website. You can find that right here. And if you liked or learned something in this video, make sure you hit that like button, leave us a comment below. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. There is plenty more fishing action to come every single week. Guys, thanks very much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you next week for another Sammy Hitsky fishing adventure. Cheers.